Are you an acupuncturist or an acupuncture student with sweaty hands? Then stay tuned because I'm going to teach you why sweaty hands really gets in the way of your moxa treatment and how to fix it. You're not going to want to miss a second of this video. Hi everyone, I am Maya Suzuki. I am the creator and lead mentor at Shinki University, the only lifetime membership and mentorship program for acupuncture, mox sebastian, and palpation in the Japanese acupuncture style worldwide. Now the goal of this YouTube channel is to elevate the practice of acupuncturists around the world so that way they can get better results for their clients and we all can help more people on this planet feel better and lead their best life. So if you haven't done so already, please do like and subscribe so you can get free videos about Japanese acupuncture and mock Sebastian every single week. So if this sounds like something that you are interested in, or if this sounds like you, be sure to look in the description box below for a link to sign up for an interview to see if Shink University is a good fit for you. So I decided to make this video about sweaty hands because I have taught countless acupuncturists that have sweaty hands and that it really does get in the way of both their acupuncture and of course their moxibustion treatment. So usually practitioners tend to have cold hands or they have sweaty hands. Now, depending on which one you are, it's gonna be a little bit easier, or a little bit harder. Cold hands, which is what I have actually, um, isn't as hard as difficult to fix and it has a really easy workaround. You can just have something warm in the office or you can raise the temperature of your office. Sweaty hands, on the other hand, is really difficult to fix. Um, it's more, it's really indicative of a more systemic autonomic nervous system issue. And so I'm gonna really get into how to fix that with a few different tips and tricks in this video. So let's get started. So as I just said, sweaty hands are a huge issue. I, but you know, cold hands can also be a really big issue for a lot of practitioners. I know I've struggled with it a lot. I'd love to know which one you have. Go ahead and put it in the comments below, either put sweaty hands or put cold hands. So before we get into this video, I would like to give a shout out to one of my students, Megan, who I think is just making so much progress with Inshink University, and she really just does deserve a big shout out. So Megan came into the program, like many other students in my program, saying that they, she lacked confidence in her acupuncture treatment, that she felt that she still needed mentorship despite having graduated from school and gone to several courses, and she had also had a gap in her practice. And so she came to Shink University hoping to fill that gap and receive that mentorship. Now, Megan has, over the past several months, grown from being really unsure and unconfident about her treatment to starting to apply and test and really experiment with all of the different techniques and theories that I put out in Shink University and all of these fundamental Japanese acupuncture techniques. And I can just see through our monthly study groups that she has grown so, so much. All right, first let's get into why sweaty hands is such a pain for both your acupuncture and your moxibustion treatment. Now, it goes without saying when you have sweaty hands, first off, it just doesn't feel good to the patient. It kind of feels like a little bit icky to your patient and it can make you really self-conscious as a practitioner. And when you're doing acupuncture, it can make your hands slide off the needle handle. Um, you know, if you have really bad sweaty hands, you can actually drip on the patient. And I often feel that it kind of distracts you from really feeling what the needle is touching within the body and connecting with the client. Now, the second thing that sweaty hands really does is it absolutely ruins your moxa. Now to explain this, I have to really briefly explain what makes moxa hot. So let's get into it. So there are three things that control the heat of any burn, oxygen, fuel, and heat. Now for moxa, that means that controlling the airflow to the moxa, the quality of your moxa, and then finally the density of your moxa, um, it really means that those three things are key to controlling the temperature of the burn of every single cone that you burn. Now, the problem with that is that when you have sweaty hands, unfortunately, the sweat, and which is of course oil and water mixed, um, gets into the mugwort, gets into the moxa, and it makes that moxa not only more dense because now it has oil and water mixed into the actual mugwort, um, but it also makes it burn at a different temperature. So oil is gonna make it eventually burn at a higher temperature, but it's gonna be harder to light initially. It's like trying to use a really wet log and then finally getting it burning. Like the, the moxa will go out midway through or it'll go out at a certain point, um, and wherever it does burn, it's gonna burn really super hot. Now, the other thing that unfortunately sweaty hands does to your moxa is it makes your moxa like crumble out of your hands. 
And it can be really frustrating when you're learning how to roll moxa, or even if you pre-roll your moxa with boards, which as everyone probably knows on this channel, I'm not a huge fan of, but even if you do do that, when you're placing your moxa on the client, that sweat's gonna get into the cone and make it now a different burn. It's not gonna be an even burn all the way through the cone, and where it does burn, it's gonna burn really super hot. So sweaty hands is a huge, huge issue. So as I said before, sweaty hands is just a really big clue that you have a huge imbalance in the autonomic nervous system. You tend to be way more on the sympathetic side than someone who has cold hands. A person who has cold hands tends to oscillate more between cold and, uh, excuse me, between sympathetic and, and parasympathetic. Um, whereas someone with sweaty hands is like really predominantly in the sympathetic mode for the most part. You know, I'm sure there's exceptions to this rule that I'm not going to mention here, but if you have any, go ahead and comment below on, on those exceptions. Now, this is of course all information that my teachers in school taught me. Um, so it's nothing that I'm like coming up with my own idea about. This is what I learned in school and I was literally taught when we started learning moxa, like if you have sweaty hands, it's gonna take you a longer time to fix this. Now, just on a side note, really quick, I just want to say that a, a big shout out to all the teachers who have ever taught me, those in Toyo Shinkyu, in Iyashiro Michi, of course, um, Yasuda Sensei, you're amazing, um, and of course in Daishiru style, uh, Shonishida Acupuncture, because these teachers have really shaped my whole career, they shape all of the information that I'm giving you guys, and they're all just kind of amazing, so huge shout out to all my teachers in Japan, you are awesome. So getting back into it, like I said before, I have cold hands. Um, and so I do have an imbalance in my nervous system as well, but it's a little bit easier to address my cold hands. Again, a quick fix for cold hands is simply having a hot stone in your clinic, raising the temperature of the clinic. Um, oftentimes I find when I'm really nervous or if I'm trying to learn something new, like a learn, learn a new technique or a new theory, uh, if I've gone from cold to hot really quickly, like come outside to inside, or if I put my hands under cold water, um, then my hands will get cold like really easily. It's hard for me to continually have warm hands. Um, but a quick fix again is to have a hot stone, have a warmer room, wear a few extra layers, especially around your midriff, keep your ankles really warm. You know, that whole kidney three, spleen six area is super important for our body temperatures. So those are really easy, quick fixes. And then of course, treating yourself and treating that, um, you know, deficiency in cold that resides for me in my lower jaw is something that I'll have to continue to treat more than likely for the rest of my life if I continue on my current sugar eating habits. But I digress. Let's talk about the sweaty hands um, and what you can really do to start addressing this because sweaty hands are a little bit harder to heal long-term. So a really easy fix for sweaty hands is just having some baby powder or some talc powder uh, near your station, either on a tissue or if you wanna get fancy, like on a little dish. Um, and then you can just take some of that powder and you can rub it on your hands, a really thin coat, you don't wanna put too much. Uh, and that'll help to absorb the sweat in your hands and the oils in your hands. The downside of this, of course, is that you get a little bit of that powder into your moxa, and we really would rather not have anything else mixing into our moxa to make it more dense. But I do feel that, you know, as a trade-off between wet, sweaty hands, wet, sweaty, oily hands, and, you know, having a little bit of talc powder in your moxa, I would go for the talc powder because it's not going to change the quality as drastically as the sweat. So this is of course not a long-term solution by any means. It's a short-term solution that's going to help you right now to start rolling moxa, placing moxa. And of course, if your sweaty hands are getting in the way of you palpating or you know, your hands are slipping on the needle handle, it's gonna help with all of that. Now, long-term, what you really need to be doing uh, is not only going to help create a better moxa practice for you, it's gonna help heal your sweaty hands, but it's also gonna help you give better treatments to your patients. And that is, of course, treating yourself. Now, treating yourself is so overlooked by so many people. We're always running to like, oh, I'm just gonna go have someone else treat me because I don't wanna treat myself. I have definitely fallen into this trap many times where I'm like, I just am so tired from clinic. I don't wanna treat myself. I'm just gonna have my friends treat me. I'll do a trade. But treating yourself helps so, so much in so many ways. So it's not only gonna tell you, like let's just talk about moxa in particular. It's gonna tell you how hot your moxa is, how exact your moxa is, 
the effects that you get with your moxa and all other good things. So the other great thing about treating yourself is you're going to be able to really feel the effects of the moxa on your body both while you're doing the treatment and afterwards. You're going to be able to see if like it was effective. And so that's going to help your technical application of moxa, your actual rolling of the cones, right? Um, how you apply it to that patient's body. But then also you're going to really be able to hone in on like, okay, what if someone comes into my clinic who has a similar autonomic nervous system imbalance like I do, they also get sweaty hands when they're really nervous, or they also have a similar stomach going on, or they also have similar issues going on. Now I can use this treatment that I know helped fix my body in this particular way to help them. So it gets you out of that protocol, like, oh, I need to treat kidney three and liver, th I don't know, and liver three, whatever. Um, and instead it like helps you to start develop like, oh no, my stomach really feels cold right here. So I'm gonna treat right here and I'm gonna see how that mox is now going to affect my body. Um, and it's just such a great 100% overall um, way to practice, way to heal yourself, way to get better treatments for your clients. Now, I know that's really broad and it's like I'm not giving you any protocol. So a really easy way to start treating yourself that's really accessible is to treat kidney one and then also in the center of the heel. Now, the center of the heel in Japanese acupuncture is considered called shizumin. It's actually a point for sleeping, uh, insomnia, things like that. Um, but what I've found is that when I do hot moxa, like I repeatedly do moxa on kidney one and in the center of the heel until the patient feels like it's hot, which sometimes can be 30 to 50 cones, that not only can it help a lot with things like heel pain, but also cold feet, sweaty hands, imbalances in the nervous system, all of these things can uh, start to be addressed, not completely addressed, of course, um, with treating the bottom of the foot. And what's really great about this is it's super accessible to you as a practitioner because it's easier to treat the bottom of your foot than it would be to treat your, I don't know, bladder 17 or 23 or something, right? You can't reach your back. So I highly suggest starting here on your foot. Um, and then also you can treat your stomach as well by like sitting on a couch so you're a little bit more upright and then you can treat your stomach that way as well. Now I'm sure there are many ways via herbs or different acupuncture technical practices to address sweaty hands. So I just want you to realize that what I'm presenting here is just one of many ways to address this situation. Now, if you really wanna start addressing why your sweaty hands are sweaty and different ways to work around it, technical practices, palpation, moxa, and so much more, I highly recommend you joining Shinki University. There is a link in the description box below to set up an interview and make sure that the program is a good fit for your practice and your goals. Now, I really look forward to talking to you, so make sure that when you set up that interview, write in the comments for it what you would really like to talk about and a little bit about your practice. Right, so that was a really simple video addressing sweating hands. I know that it is a huge issue, but I do hope it'll help you start to address your sweaty hands and make you more apt to burn the perfect cone of moxa with every patient, every single time. Now, please do not forget to like, subscribe, and hit that little bell to be notified of new videos that I put out every week about Japanese acupuncture and moxibustion to continue perfecting your acupuncture practice. Please click on this video to pick up the number one taught acupuncture technique in Japan called Nenshin, and then you can watch this video over here if you want to start creating your moxa practice. I hope you enjoyed this video, and until I see you next time, happy practicing!